But Section 702 is indispensable in keeping Americans safe from a whole barrage of fast-moving foreign threats. It is crucial to identifying terrorists in the homeland, working with or inspired by a rogues gallery of foreign terrorist organizations who have publicly called for attacks against our country. FBI, FBI Director Christopher Wray pushing the idea of importance of FISA Section 702 during that House Appropriations Subcommittee hearing yesterday. Multiple lawmakers telling Fox that there is a new plan now to pass the FISA reauthorization bill. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan told me yesterday he wants a warrant requirement for the 702 program. Watch. Putting more regulations on the FBI on how they search the 702 database is not enough. You have to go to a separate and equal branch of government. You have to go to the judicial branch and get the warrant to do so. And we even provide exceptions. We say if it's, a, if it's an emergency situation, imminent threat to the safety of the country, you can do the search. But short of that, go get a warrant. That's how our Constitution works. Joining me now with more on all of this is Georgia Congressman Andrew Clyde. He's a member of the House Appropriations Committee. And, Congressman, thank you for being here this morning. You were in that meeting yesterday, the hearing, questioning Ray about FISA. What did you learn, and what can you tell us about where we stand on this now? Well, good morning, Maria. Uh, yes, I was in that hearing yesterday, and I was very disappointed in Director Ray's uh, testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, as Mike Garcia said, we simply don't trust him. We don't trust the FBI. I mean, they want to eliminate through fear, and he was pretty much uh, beating that line, through fear they want to eliminate our freedoms. And uh, the, as Jim Jordan said, the Fourth Amendment is there for a purpose. It's there to protect us from a government you know, the law enforcement has to get a, a warrant when they search your property, so the intelligence community must do exactly the same thing. They must get a warrant. We're going to be voting on it this morning, and I believe that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the warrant requirement will pass. So wh what are they doing, using FISA to surveil people and just abusing this at the FBI? Oh, I uh, oh, the FBI has abused this authority in 2021 alone, 278,000 times on record as abusing wow. the FISA authority to illegally and unconstitutionally search people's electronic records. Wow. Yeah, and I, it feels like they're doing so on all Trump associates and anybody they just don't like, political enemies. That's exactly correct, and, and we can't allow that. I mean, we're here to protect your constitutional rights, your Fourth Amendment rights. You know, the Fourth Amendment has its own supremacy clause, shall not be violated, just like the Second Amendment, shall not be infringed. So, therefore, how can we legitimately allow the intelligence community to infringe on your rights without the requirement of a warrant? It should not happen, never. No. It sounds like corruption if you've got one president's DOJ and FBI surveilling uh, his opponent's uh, associates uh, and wanting to continue doing it. But let's put the corruption aside and focus on policy, because you posted this on X. Since Joe Biden took office, Georgians' expenses have increased by over $23,000 due to inflation. Now, the president is trying to skirt responsibility for where he took us regarding inflation. And Fox Business's White House correspondent Edward Lawrence had the facts. He pressed White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre on the president now claiming that inflation was skyrocketing when he took office instead of his policies causing it. Watch this. The president said that when he came into office, inflation was skyrocketing, but uh, it was 1.4 percent in January of 2021, and that was the 11th consecutive month at that time, under 2 percent. So was the president misleading Americans? When the president took office, and you know this, there was a pandemic. It was closing down businesses, closing down schools, uh, and so it was drastically disrupting the supply chain. The president didn't say the supply chain was being disrupted. He said inflation was skyrocketing. We had a supply chain that was disrupted. And so that's what the president was speaking to and laying out. Is the president being honest about inflation? The president had to take historic action, take aggressive action in dealing with our disruption in the supply chain. Congressman, your thoughts? Well, I would say that since the president has uh, taken office, President Biden, inflation has gone up over 19 percent. Uh, when it when President Trump was, when he left office, it was 1.4 percent. No, Bidenomics is not working for the American people, and they know it. And 
You know, this election is going to be about about our, the economy and it's going to be about border security. And Americans see that Joe Biden is not leading, is failing on both issues. So, wh what do you think happened with inflation? Is it all the spending? Oh, absolutely. Government spending, increased government spending, increases inflation. That's what injects money into the market. It makes things more expensive, uh, makes money more free. So, therefore, you have higher inflation. And Joe Biden has been pumping billions upon billions and actually trillions of dollars into the market. And that's the cause of inflation. Yeah, I mean, $7 trillion in, in, in spending, and we mentioned a few of them earlier, but, you know, the CHIPS Act is something that was pretty bipartisan, but it was more spending. The green energy tax credits, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which was not responsible, we're talking about a $36 trillion debt, okay? Inflation Reduction Act did not reduce inflation. Which one of these did you vote for? None of them, Maria. <laughs> no, they're all inflation drivers. And President Biden is absolutely uh, responsible for the massive inflation that we're seeing. I mean, just in Georgia alone, it's costing our citizens now over $1,000 extra per month, over $23,000 uh, since Joe Biden has been in office, just to buy the exact same thing. No, yeah. Bidenomics does not work. Good job on uh, not voting for those things. Joe Borelli, jump in here. <laughs> I really wanted to ask the congressman how this plays out in Georgia. I mean, we're six months away from the election. What are people in the swing state saying? Can he make up the 12,000 votes based on the economy alone? Oh, I think the president's going to take Georgia. You know, we've got work to do on the ground, but I really think that, that Georgia is going to go red for President Trump. I mean, we cannot afford four more years of Joe Biden. The country can't, and certainly the state of Georgia cannot. Congressman, how focused are you on election integrity? President Trump uh, teamed up with the House Speaker Mike Johnson yesterday to give a press conference on election integrity. What are you all doing in Georgia about it? Well, the House has been, and the Senate and the governor have been very strong on election integrity. You know, a couple of years ago, we passed SB 202. The House passed a couple of more bills. Uh, and, and I think that uh, election integrity is going to be pretty sound in the state of Georgia. All right, great. Congressman, good to see you this morning. Thank you, sir. Andrew Clyde Thank joining you. us this morning in D.C.